really, this is the last one. Diabetes is one of the top 10 causes of death for Americans. Left unchecked, it can lead to heart attacks and kidney failure. Steve Crooks was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes in 2002. It's a scary thing. It's really, truly scary. Adult onset diabetes, or type 2, is almost twice as common in blacks than non-Hispanic whites. And that presents a gap, one that Chicago's Southside Diabetes Project aims to close. We hear diabetes and we think it's a death sentence. And so one of my messages is of hope that you can be told that you have diabetes, but it doesn't mean that life is going to end. Beyond the hospital walls, primary care physician Dr. Monica Peake co-leads Chicago's Southside Diabetes Project. In its 10th year, its goal is to reduce the health gap by incorporating community outreach. This is a great place to um, get the wheatgrass. You can actually see it. One strategy includes a nutritional tour at the local farmer's market on Saturdays, where participants walk away with a $10 gift certificate. Down here, we have a variety of mushrooms, of course, if that's something people enjoy. I feel like I'm giving back the knowledge that was given to me when I took the classes. So it, kept, it helps me stay accountable for the things I know I'm not supposed to be doing. Angela Fullalove was diagnosed with diabetes a few years ago. Once a participant in the Southside Diabetes Project, she's now been a volunteer for four years. The project also partners with six clinics, grocery stores, and a food pantry, with a focus on education, access, and community. And according to Peak, participants have seen improvements like a decrease in blood sugar levels and glucose control. Why are more African Americans at risk? There are a lot of factors. Peek says genetics play a part, and so do structural inequities or structural racism. A few examples, the lack of access to healthy food and healthcare services, and poverty. And even though the South Side is source limited, Peek wants to change that narrative. The most effective lever that we have for change is love. It's free. <laughs> and that's Certainly technology helps, certainly, you know, careful planning, but when we ask people why they keep coming back to our classes, to our activities, to whatever, it's um, people feeling cared for.